Okay, so I'm going to show you how I make my masks. They're a little bit bigger than some. They're pleated and they've got a wire in the in the nose area. It's a long enough wire that it actually bends down over your cheek, so I find it very comfortable and good for glasses. Uh, so for the materials you're going to need, I've got a piece each of my outer fabric and my lining fabric. Um, the outer fabric I found on Spoonflower, it's just a cotton. Uh, the lining fabric, I'm just using a, a cotton um, broadcloth. Uh, additionally, you'll need some elastic. The elastic length you need depends on what style you're going to do. I'm going to show you three different styles of, uh, of I guess, attachment. Uh, for the ear loops, um, generally speaking, you're going to want seven inch to start with. Uh, my husband actually likes six inch, so these are cut to six inch, but cut them to seven inch for yourself as a starting point. If you're doing an over the head style like I like, um, you need one piece of uh, 12 and a half inch and one piece of 10 inch. Um, and if you're doing a tie style with four ties to go around the head, uh, you want four pieces of 12 inch. Um, these are all three eighths inch. They're what I like best for the ties and for um, the pull on style. If you're doing the over the ear style, usually I'll use a quarter inch. It's been kind of hard to come by lately. So if I'm using the three eighths inch. My husband deals with it. Um, in addition to that, I've got floral wire here. I'm going to have to check the uh, gauge on it, but I believe it's about 18. Um, for equipment, you need pins, a sewing machine, uh, pliers, and scissors. Um, and I believe that's about it, but don't be surprised if I correct myself part way. Uh, so to start out, you got to pin your fabric. I'll show you all different styles. Um, you need to decide what's going to be the top of your fi fabric, um, the top of your mask. Uh, this one doesn't have a, a discrete like top and bottom, so I can do whatever. So I'm going to say this is going to be the top. Uh, so for the first style, the uh, the ear style, what you do is you pin your short elastics diagonally like this, and you're going to swap it out later. It's just awkward because I'm not turning because I'm on camera. But basically just get it in position. And honestly, you don't really have to pin um, for this style uh, at the first part, but oh no, you really should. I'm really bad on camera, I'm sorry. Uh, so basically what you're going to do is making sure you don't twist this elastic. You're going to affix this end to the bottom corner. Uh, so like this. And pin it so that the the pearlized end of it is, is facing out. Because that's going to make things easier in the next step. So it'll be like that, basically. And see how it's, if you straighten it out, it's just straight, there's no twist. You wanna make sure that's the case each time. Um, for lining, you're gonna pin that right over top of where you got. I just basically pin it first. I, when I'm making them myself, I don't bother pinning them, but for showing you keep it straight, I think that's probably the best way to demonstrate. So basically just hold it all together, pull the pin out and repin through all three layers. And this will make sure that it doesn't twist, uh, which is going to be in comfort, important for the comfort when wearing it. <laughs> you might be able to hear that my cat Elro has some opinions about the whole thing. Uh, so now if this pattern had been something that had a, a definite top and bottom, like we'd say this would be the top, you're going to want to pin... I mean, either way, whether it's a definite top or bottom, whatever is going to be your top, just put a pin in it like that um, so that you can keep track of what the top is. Uh, so that's the over the ear style. I'll put that aside for now. Uh, the next one's going to be the style I prefer, which is an over the head style. Uh, so you've got your two pieces of elastic. Find the piece that's longer and attach it in what's going to be the top corner uh, in the same way. So I'm just going to pin it and making sure to keep it flat so you see there's no twist at all and do 
the same thing across from it. And again, this is going to be the top edge of it. So this is the long elastic. And then just repeat it with the short elastic. Once again, making sure to keep the whole thing flat. Aim it in the other corner. Curl side out. And like so. Then you take the lining, line it all up, pull the pin out, repin through all layers, and just repeat that on all four corners. So while I'm at it, this is going to be the top edge, as I was saying. So I'm just going to go ahead and put a pin to mark the top. And there we go. So that is the second style. That's the over the head style. The final style. These are four uh, separate strings. So this one you really don't need to match anything up because they're not connecting to anything. So you can just go ahead and pin them without pre-pinning onto the first level. This whole pinning thing is really kind of annoying to me because I normally sew a spandex and I don't pin my spandex unless I really, really have to. So generally speaking, when I'm making masks, I am swearing the entire time because I'm sticking myself and driving it right into my bone and I'm just, I'm not very good with pins. So let's hope this goes well. Anyways, this one, as I said, doesn't have a, a top and bottom really. So we'll just declare this one to be the top. And go from there. So there's our four styles good to go. Now the reason I pinned at the top was so that I could discern the top from the bottom because you're gonna stop sewing and start sewing at the bottom edge. So I like to pick a point part way like just flattening everything out in part. It's not really the center, a little bit past center. And just line everything up. I sew a couple stitches backtrack to lock it. And so all the way to the end. Now I'm going to stop sewing so I can say, make sure that your elastic is not getting stuck under your seam at all. You're only going to want to cross the elastic at the corners. So we'll sew. We get to the end. Bring the needle down. Pivot. And for this, I like to put my hand kind of in there and just coax the elastic away from the edge because it's kind of tight. Uh, they said you don't want it under. So as you get closer, you can kind of pull it forward a bit so it's not dragging it back so much. down so it's not messing with it all. Ooh, I almost lost the elastic on that one. So 
this is the final edge so you can see where we stop I like to stop you know two inches short of that backtrack and trim the threads so now you can see this is your top the bottom one's the opening uh, just go ahead and trim all of your corners that makes it so there's less bulk in each corner just be really careful not to come too too close to your actual seam and then that part there uh, what I just did from sewing all around uh, is going to be the same for each of these three styles so I'm actually going to put these away and sew them off camera um, be back in a minute okay so next thing we're gonna do I've got my pile of uh, masks done up here I've got all the type top sides facing one way uh, now what I'm gonna do is take the wires um, like I said these were cut to about five and a half inches um, so I've got a pair of needle nose pliers and I just take the very tip and curl it over do you see it's curled over put that up to the camera and then I just take the flat end this is kind of annoying and uh, squish it and it likes to roll so sometimes it's a bit a bit more obnoxious of course because I'm on camera it's not going quite as easily as it normally does there we go so basically you want it to get it nice and flat you see that yeah so you do that to both sides so curl And squish. Squish! Then you're probably going to bend it out of spot, so just kind of straighten it out a bit. So you're going to do that to all three. Just curl and squish. It's like a soca song. It's not like clap and wave, it's curl and squish. I'm not very soca, but I love soca. I'm also not very engaging on camera, so I don't know what to say, so. Hi. Now my cat, Elro, as you can hear, possibly, uh, he would be a lot more engaging on camera because he has things to say. His opinions about us being out of, uh, out of his sight. Oh, that one went nice. So the purpose of the curl is partially so you don't stab yourself at the end of the wire when you're wearing it partially to hold the wire in place uh, on your nose and partially to hold the wire in place in your seam because um, it acts kind of as a stopper there. So you see I've got three nicely finished wires. So what you're going to do is set your sewing machine to a very wide zigzag. Not too too wide but definitely wide enough that you are going to be safe doing this. And you can measure if you want. I tend to just freehand placing it in the center of the top seam. Um, so what you're going to want to do is hold it very close to the actual seam. Start your seam right after the curl over and hold it just to the outside of the seam. And start by hand crossing over a few times. And just be really, really careful to keep that centered um, in your presser foot because you don't want your needle to hit the wire. Let's see. Okay, there we go. Maybe a shorter. I like to do like a shorter stitch length while I'm doing this just to kind of give it more security. And just sew it again as close to the seam as you can reasonably. Um, ideally you want the left side of the seam to be hitting right about where the of the new seam of the zigzag to be hitting where the seam is on the actual base. Then you get to the end and then just let it like hold it in place and let it go a few times to tack it in. And there you go. So that's that. So I'll just quickly do that on the other ones. Just eyeball it. Go over a couple times. Oh, that's dangerous and close. Thank you. 
Okay, so now we've got our three masks done in the three different styles uh, with the wire in there. Oops. Up the camera. Let's see, it's one of the flat ones. Let's try to zoom in. Okay, so now what you're gonna do is pull it out through the hole in the bottom. So what I like to do is go in and grab one end of the wire and fish that out first like so. And it's okay if you bend it a little bit. I just try to avoid bending it as much as possible because that means less fussing later on. So you just pull on all of the uh, sides. And you can see here that the wire is quite bent up so I just kind of straighten that out a bit. So it's pretty straight with the seam. Make sure all the ends are pulled all the way out and you've got one base mask. So I'll do that again. So, all the corners and just kind of fuss with the seams so you get them pretty straight like this. Again, this one got a little bit bent, so just straighten it out. And there you've got the over the ear style. And the final one. Just a fuss to get it straight. If you're really fussy and not as lazy as I am, you can iron it at this point. I usually don't bother. There's one more. Now I forgot to line them up, so feel where the wire is and put all those facing the same direction. So there you go. So next you gotta pin them. That's why it's important to know where the top is. So this is the top where the wire is. Um, you pleat them so that they're going facing the bottom. And you can pleat them any way you want. I tend to do it freehand and they're not usually the most parallel, but they're close enough. So we'll call that good for one pleat there. I know some people have little pleaters that they make and I don't know how that works, but if you mostly keep it level it's good enough but as I said you want the fold I think I said you want the fold facing downward and try not to overlap your fabric so the fold from this one I don't like having touching that one I actually folded that a bit more than I wanted so I'm gonna redo that I'll just try and keep them mostly even and parallel across once it's on your face, it really doesn't matter because um, it opens up. But you like to keep the uh, the overall size pretty similar on each side. So there you go. It's the second fold. I'll just make sure that's kind of even in place. And top end. And one thing I should have mentioned is on the outside edge here, like as you're pinning it, try and make sure. I guess I didn't fuss with this one enough when I was turning it inside out, right side out. But um, you want the the main fabric all the way to the edge because um, it's easy for it to kind of turn a bit if it's not all the way pulled out. So just fuss with that so it's nice and lined up on the outside. And don't pin through your elastic. There's the first.
first pleat, do a second pleat, and making sure on the edge that there's not like a double layer in the pleating. And I like that the pleating makes it look really small. Like these masks cover the majority of the lower part of your face. Like they're not an insubstantial mask, but they look a lot smaller than they are. So one last one. And again, just make sure, like this is the wire up here, you can't really see it, but I can feel it. Just make sure the wire is at the top part when you're folding. And just making sure it's mostly even. And that. So now you've got your three masks good to go. Uh, I like to start sewing at this upper, at the upper right side, I guess, if you're looking at the right side uh, being up. So just make sure you set your sewing machine back to a straight stitch. Set it up. I like to be a little bit more, um, like when I'm sewing the, the first round of sewing, I like to line up the edge with the outside of my presser foot. This I like to do it about halfway between the presser foot and the needle. Uh, just so it's a little closer to the edge. And we just sew a straight seam. Backtrack a bit. And just make sure that the um, pleating doesn't come undone as you're sewing. Take the needle out and I like to realign to make sure that the edge on the outside stays pretty straight. It's not super necessary but it looks cleaner. Then on this, you've got the open section. So I like to just run my finger in and pull it to straighten it all out. And then sew fairly close to the end. I didn't have that all the way on straight, so. So as you come to the top edge, just fuss with it a little to make sure that the wire is as far to the outside as it can be. And then do a, a bit wider uh, so that you're actually, so that the wire is to the outside of your presser foot. So again, you don't want to sew through the wire. And just make sure it's straight. Feed it through. First end and done. Just trim your threads, make sure everything looks good, and there's your face mask. Uh, so what I like to do is put my finger right in the middle, bend it around there, and just bend it back a little so you get the start of a nose um, wire. When you put it on, you're going to mold it more specifically to your face, but it's just nice to have that to help it get centered on your face. Uh, and that's that. I'll go ahead and sew the other two. So there you have it, my three different styles of mask. Um, the same basic style of bicep all across the face, and it's just a matter of comfort in wearing it. Uh, this one is the one I use when I'm making a mask for someone else that I can't fit because it gives them the most... Um, adjustability in terms of how they want to wear it. Uh, this is the style I prefer um, basically to put it on. I just fish my head, like my hand through it and pull it down over my head. Um, I find that one uh, 
feels the most secure to me and I, it doesn't pull on my ears. Um, my ears don't hold masks up very well. And then this is the basic over the ear style uh, that a lot of people like. So there you go. Three different styles of mask. Autistic approved. 